2010, game designer Jesse Shell did a talk for the Dice Summit about the invasion of games into real life and about how that was going to affect us over time. And I think it was a really interesting talk because it predicted a lot of things that are actually beginning to happen. It started talking about how Facebook had changed the face of games with things like Farmville where games were no longer just about getting away, escaping into a fantasy world. They were about bringing the real world and the fantasy world together because you were interacting with your real friends, you were getting them involved in it, and you were spending real money to create virtual money and spending real money on virtual goods. At the end of the talk, he started to go into what happens next. And he started to describe gamification without mentioning the word gamification. Because he was discussing things such as how governments and how companies would start to give people points every day in their lives for certain activities. And it started off with you getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and you got points for brushing for long enough, brushing well enough. And he said that it was, there were two parts to it. One was about you brushing your teeth and learning that you've done it for the right length of time. The other one was that the uh, brand of toothpaste would want you to brush for longer because then you would use more toothpaste and then you would buy more toothpaste. And the talk went on discussing how you would get points because your child had done well at school and how that would go towards government uh, discounts on things, how you would use your supermarket loyalty and get discounts and drink coffee at the right place and get discounts and points. And the whole thing was very morbid to a certain extent because it kind of it showed how every action in your life in the future could be monitored and tracked and scored. And I think that's what most people remember about the talk, is that it was quite scary, this idea that everything we did was going to be monitored and it was going to be scored and we'd get achievements. We'd, you'd use the same shop five times in a row and get an achievement for that. You'd use um, your child will do well at school and you'll get a discount because of that and so that will give you that sort of pressure to make the child do well at school. But I think what a lot of people forget is one of the comments he made right at the end of the talk. Now the parent who's been doing everything steps back and thinks to themselves what was the point of that? They just read a book and it was their 500th book that they had read through Amazon and Amazon had given them an award and they stopped and thought that book was rubbish it wasn't that there was no quality to that book and now that everything is recorded my grandchildren and their grandchildren will see what books I read and what kind of legacy does that leave behind me Should I be doing better? Should I improve? Should I take this as a lesson and think, maybe I should try harder, maybe I should do better, maybe I should try harder to read things that are more, in, that are more intelligent, that are more interesting. Now he said this was conjecture, this, you know, it wasn't, it probably was just commercialism, but that resonated with me. The fact that all of these metrics, all of these measures that he was predicting, which are now beginning to come true, if you watch the video again, it is coming true, it is happening. You can look at it as a glass half empty or a glass half full. If it's half empty, then it is the man, it is Big Brother watching you, and it's commercialism and consumerism at its absolute worst. If you look at it as a glass half full, it's an opportunity to understand your own behaviour. It's an opportunity to get feedback on who you really are, not who you think you are, not who you portray, but who you actually are, because you are getting feedback on what you are. You're getting feedback on what you do and how you act. 
you're getting feedback on how other people see and perceive you. And when you have that, you, begin, you can begin to change. You can begin to think, do I need to try harder? Is there something about myself that this has shown me could change? Now, reading trash novels isn't really a big problem. Your grandkids aren't going to care. But it was an interesting concept that because I knew that people would be able to see what I'd done, should I change who I am? Now, it's an interesting philosophical question. And I was recently challenged myself on my own self-perceptions. And I realised there are two versions of me. There's the version that goes and does talks at GWC. There's the version that writes on, uh, on my blog a lot. There's the version that publishes things and puts himself out there. And then there's the real version of me. The nervous introvert. The person who likes to spend time with his kids, who's very unsure of himself day to day, who has one or two people he really calls friends, who likes to play guitar, who plays video games, who knows where his first teddy is, who plays Animal Jam with his kids, who plays dodgeball in the back garden with the kids. That's the real me, the person who loves his family, who loves his wife, who still gives his 77 year old dad hugs and cuddles and kisses. And he's a very different person to the one that people see out there. And until I've had that feedback, I hadn't really considered the fact that there are two versions of me. The one that I let people see and the one that only a very few people see and know about. And is that a problem? Is that something I need to change? And the honest answer, I think, is no, not really. Do I need to change how the world perceives me? Not really. This kind of video helps people get a slightly better insight into who I am. But because I've had that feedback, it has made me stop and think. It has made me consider my actions and consider who I am and who I want to be. And without that feedback, I wouldn't have considered that at all. And that's why I think Jesse Shell's sort of prediction of the future, the bit that people forget, the bit where all of this feedback can have a positive, is something we really do need to actually consider and consider more intelligently, rather than just looking at the rest of it and going, God, this is hell. Everything we do is measured, it's going to be horrible. So I think going forwards, we as games, gamification designers should really consider how this feedback can actually impact the behaviours of people in reality. Now, one of his calls to action in the talk was, who is going to lead this charge? And it is obvious that it's not going to be the games developers, because they hate gamification that I have seen so far. Ian Bogust, uh, massive disliker of the way the gamification uh, has abused game design and I once said to him become part of the solution not part of the problem help us show help us understand how to do this better lead the way and he described that as um, something along the lines of benign terrorism because if he did act he had to go against his own beliefs and if he didn't act then Obviously, he didn't want to make a change. Now, I truly believe that games designers hold the key to the future of everything. I don't mean video game designers. I mean people who think like games designers. Children. Children think like games designers. They build games constantly. They play. They make. They create new realities. And they mix those, reali those new realities in with the real reality. Fantasy and reality are the same thing for them now. And going forward, that is going to become what drives society. Not games per se, but game thinking. That mentality of how to play and how to create games from things. They are the ones who will drive our future. What we need to do is let them. We need to create an environment where that mindset can thrive. Another thing Jesse Shell mentioned in his um, talk was about a teacher who was using a different type of grading system where it wasn't A to F, it was zero experience points to whatever experience points. You, you went up the scale rather than going down the scale. We start at school with the thought in our mind of A is what we need. We need to be at the top, we need to be the best at all times and F is failure. But actually F is where we start. We don't know 
when we start, how it's going to progress. So we start at F and we work our way up to A. But that's not how the school system works. The school system sits there and says you are average, you are a C, until you prove you are excellent or a failure. It starts us off too high. We should start at F, we should start at the bottom, and we should work our way up. Games do not generally throw you into the middle of the expertise. They don't set you down in the middle of the game at the point where you should have half of your skills and say, start. It starts you at the beginning and it holds your hand and it walks you through. So again, Jesse Shell's predictions of how games designers should develop the future, games players will develop the future, games designers will develop the future, our children will develop the future, and games are part of their now. So games will be part of our future. Like it or not, it's not an invasion, because an invasion it implies that it shouldn't be happening. It should be happening. It is happening. And we are going to have to deal with that fact. So I implore you, go and watch Jesse Shell's talks, 2010 Dice talk. I'll put a link in the bottom um, in the comments for YouTube. It is a brilliant look at how games have changed since Facebook and how the, cons the consumption of games has changed. And it's a really interesting sight into what in 2010 was the future and what in 2017 is the present. And you can either get on board with it or you can fall by the wayside. And I think the people watching this video are likely to be the ones who think the same way as me. That we get on board with it now and we help drive it and we help lead it and we help shape it and we help create better societies and better outcomes for everybody. Cheers. Thank you.